Hello, I'm Ruth Shilston. I'm an associate here at RWDI and today I'm going to talk about why I think thermal comfort is important and how we undertake an assessment. There are a number of components that go into a thermal comfort assessment. The first thing I need is a really detailed understanding of the climatic environment in the area I'm interested in. And to do this, we do advanced computer modelling. The most challenging variable to model is wind. Wind is constantly changing in strength and direction, it gusts around buildings and structures. And to model it we use advanced computational fluid dynamics modelling, which gives us an assessment of the wind strength, the wind direction and the wind gust. We also undertake detailed solar modelling, and this allows us to understand how much sun is landing on a particular environment, and how the solar energy is absorbed and reflected by the materials of the buildings around the space that I'm interested in. We combine these two detailed assessments with an understanding of climate data in terms of recorded historic air temperature, humidity, cloud cover, to give us a complete understanding of, in detail of the climatic environment of the space we're interested in, which as an engineer is really exciting for me because I can understand in detail how that space performs throughout the year, throughout different seasons and different times of day. With my understanding of the climatic environment, the next thing I need to understand is how we as human beings physically respond to that environment. And this varies depending on what I'm doing as a human. So if I'm sat out in London having my coffee, and I'll be really sensitive to air movement, if it's cold and the air's moving across my skin, that can make me feel quite uncomfortable. However, if I have direct sun on my face, then that will warm me up. Switching for a moment, if we think about an elite sports person, that person might need to run as hard as they can for many, many minutes. In that case, I would be really interested in understanding how much moisture is already in the air, the humidity in that environment, and therefore the ability of that elite sports person to evaporate the sweat that they're producing to regulate their temperature. So with my understanding of the climatic environment and the physical response of me as a human, the next thing I need to consider is my expectation and my ability to adapt to my environment. So again, in London, we have a very variable climate. I will always look at the weather forecast before I go outside. And if it's going to be cold and dry and I want to sit out, I'll put on a thick coat, a scarf and a hat, and I'll go out and I'll expect to be in a comfortable environment to have my coffee, enjoy, enjoy the sunshine, and I'm not concerned about the cold weather. If, however, I want to walk along the Corniche in Abu Dhabi, here I don't expect to be able to do that in the middle of the day in July because it is just too hot. However, with the right design, I can do that same walk in the evening, in the summer, or in the middle of the day in winter by provision of shade and ensuring I'm getting those sea breezes that cool me down. The final piece of the puzzle is how do we measure success? What does good look like? And again, this varies depending on what activity we're looking at and where we are in the world. There are areas such as London where we have thermal comfort measures which are actually required as part of our planning or our permitting process. And there are other parts of the world where we would choose the appropriate metric which combines those variables that I've just talked about to give us a measure of pass or fail or success or failure. And this allows me as a designer to take multiple different design options and compare them and say, well, this design performs better than this design based on the climatic environment, how I as a human will respond both physically and in terms of my expectations. So having looked at how we undertake a thermal comfort assessment, the final piece is to design a great city. And we can do this from a large scale master plan where we're looking at the form of, a bu of the buildings and how they're arranged relative to each other, all the way down to an individual space where we might look in detail at the design of a shading element or a local windscreen. The work that we do is always undertaken in a really collaborative fashion, working with the design team to iterate the design, taking into account many factors, not just thermal comfort. And how we design for thermal comfort again depends on where we are in the world and the local climate, as well as how those spaces will be used. So in summary, working with a consultative partner will ensure that you have a detailed understanding of thermal comfort to allow you to elevate the design of your cities.